continuing with our football club history series, we're now looking at Norwich City. Now, yesterday we looked at Ipswich Town, their biggest rivals, the only professional team in Suffolk. We now go north to Norwich and the only professional team in Norfolk. Yes, Norwich City Football Club. Nickname the Canaries. Uh, they play out of Carrow Road where they've played since 1935 and that currently has a capacity of 27,359. Uh, but their early history is fraught with a, a bit of, well, will we survive? They're founded in 1902. And then, unfortunately, World War One breaks out in 1914, and they're liquidated before the end of that conflict. A lot of clubs actually end up going out of business at this time, and they're one of them. On December the 10th, 1917, the the club that was initially formed in 1902 has been liquidated. But fear not, Norwich fans, because obviously you do survive. The club is reformed on the 15th of February 1919. A year later, they join the expanding football league in 1920s. So they're admitted in. Uh, in 1920 with a whole other load of clubs. Now, they've never won the league title, or the Premier League title for that matter, and their highest ever league position was third in the inaugural Premier League season in 92-93. They finished third. And uh, they got to a, an FA Cup semi-final that year as well. But here's the other thing. They actually have won silverware, and they've been to four cup finals, and they have played in Europe. And this is very, very important. So they're, they're honours. They've won the League Cup twice, and they've lost two League Cup finals. So there's a period between 1962 and 1985 where they appear in four Cup finals, winning two of them. So they're not a bad side throughout their history. But ironically, uh, Ipswich, their biggest rivals, are slightly more successful. Sorry, sorry Norwich, I, I had to say that. Slightly more successful. But they win the League Cup in 61-62 the season. And then they follow that up with two runners-up medals in the 72-73 and the 74-75 seasons. Uh, so they, uh, the 72-73 season, they make the final. And in 74-75, they make the final. And then it's a gap of 10 years before they're back in the final again, which they win the year before Oxford United win it in the 84-85 season. They win the League Cup a second time. Now, unfortunately, that is the end of the silverware for... Uh, Norwich City, but they've all gone on a decent European run as well in the early 90s in the UEFA Cup, with Brian Gunn in goal, uh, but unfortunately, yeah, the silverware just stops in the mid-80s, but a lot of sides in the mid-80s were really decent sides, it was just a very congested competitive league, and I say this, Oxford United were a good side in the mid-80s, Norwich City were a good side in the mid-80s, even if it was Chan, were a European champion yeah, with the UEFA Cup in the 80s, there were a lot of good sides battling in the 80s, it just so happened that we had Liverpool, Nottingham Forest, Everton and Aston Villa were also pretty decent sides in the 80s. There were a lot of sides winning silverware, both domestically and in Europe, and it was very, very hard uh, to, to get even a hand on a trophy. So to win the League Cup in the mid-80s and to actually appear in four finals in a very competitive period for English football, which is more competitive than people realise, is no mean achievement. You can be very, very proud of that that purple patch, which is a purple patch between the mid the early 60s and the mid-90s. Norwich did have a purple patch. And in recent times, they've bounced around. They've dropped out the Premier League. They got back to the Premier League. They had a consistent spell in the Premier League for several seasons, get relegated again. And now you've become this, this yo-yo club um, where you're up one season, back in the championship, up one season, back in the championship. And, and it's happened again. And that's the problem is establishing yourself, yourself in the top flight and staying there. And that's been the problem in the last 20 or so years is they sort of bounced around the top two divisions a fair bit. But still nothing against Norwich City. Fabulous history. Uh, you know, they go back, uh, you know, 120, 120 years since initial foundation. Um, and you've got silverware in there. So, and, and once, since you've been in the Football League, you've never been out of it. So, again, one of those other Football League clubs that once admitted has never been relegated back out. So, there you go. Uh, records. Now, the records are very interesting. I decided to choose appearances and two goal records. So, the appearance record is he held by Kevin Keelan. Uh, 673 between 1963 and 1980. So, he misses out on those two League Cups, uh, which is a shame. But he's got two runners-up medals uh, to his name. And on the goals front, uh, Ralph Hunt in a single season scored 31 in the 55-56 season in the old Division 3 South. And Johnny Gavin is your all-time top goal scorer with 122 between 1948 and 1955 when obviously Ralph Hunt replaces him. 
Other fun facts, obviously I've already stated uh, you're the only professional side in Norfolk and that the fan song or the chant on the Ball City dates back to 1890 uh, and it's the oldest fan chant still in continuous use in football. Uh, your main rivals obviously are Ipswich Town. So there's a brief his history on Norwich City FC. Um, you know, I could have gone down season by season records where you finish and, and again, some of these history videos will be stupidly long. And that's why they're called a brief history. So I over do an overview, foundation, liquidation dates, if there are any, when they join the football league, you know, league league titles, league honours, that kind of thing. And the sad thing is Norwich, uh, when they had their purple patch, only came away with two out of the four trophies they could have won because they lost two finals. But at the time they're they're you know, they're at the top end of English football. It was very, very difficult. Very, very competitive. There were a lot of sides trying to compete for silverware. And there were some really good sides at the time. It just so happened that Liverpool were the most dominant side during Norwich's purple patch. But there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Please place your thoughts in the comments section below. And I'll have some more videos for you very, very soon.